You have no idea how lucky you are today. Today we have the miss, the amazing father of the child sitting on the couch over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he handles tech issues, and today we've had many of them. So we're recording this and posting it post the interview. So it's a post, post, post. And so today, Craig Shoemaker's here. He comes from Philadelphia. They don't make him any better. He is the love master. He's the shoe. You've seen him everywhere. You can see comics. He's got books. He's a comedian. He's a writer. He's a producer. He's a dad. <laughs> What's the name of your son? This one's, this one's Jackson. I, I wanted him to see what daddy does. And... Awesome. And he, he's quite perplexed after the uh, uh, 30 minutes of trying to get our Zoom call right. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I, 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 I'm trying to tell him, uh, this is my business. And he's going, this is no business I want to be in. What, uh, <laughs> what are you, you going to be when you grow up? Not a he's just not a comedian. <laughs> I'm so sorry that this happened for you to see this today. Your dad is amazing. And when you're... When your dad is on stage, I started comedy six years ago at Aces in Murrieta. And my first month, your dad came on stage. And he, he tore the place up like it was nobody's business. I was ready to quit comedy. <laughs> I was like, ah. I don't know what you did. I, and you stayed and talked to everybody there, Craig. I've been told that before that the you know people getting you know they're new into the business, but you know i've I've had those same feelings if I watch someone when I saw Bruce Springsteen for the first time, I said to myself, "Wow, uh who wouldn't want to do that? you know I mean that's what I aspired to do is uh really you know bring it from the heels and tell the truth and uh and and be uh, personal and and that's what uh that's what he does and you know, I can keep aspiring to do that, but never quit because somebody does it better. Yes, yes. But they're just, they just have more years under their belt, that's all. Exactly. Yeah. Tell me about your youth when you were your son's age and you turned on the TV in black and white. I'm sorry, I'm dating myself. When you turned on the TV and you saw comics, what, what, made, what tickled your fancy as a kid? From all, you saw some of the greats growing up. Yeah, I did, but a lot of them weren't on TV. It was on albums. Uh, yeah. There's another dating yourself thing there. An album, uh, like a Richard Pryor album, was was really a uh, key to my existence. And uh, but before that, and even during that, I was really into impressionists. Uh, Rich Little was was my guy, and he would he would do guest stars on things. And matter of fact, one of the first impressions I did was Rich Little. I did an impression of Rich Little. Uh, let me see how it goes. Hi, I'm Rich Little. Today on You Ask for It, we're gonna. Ask. <laughs> he had a show called You Ask for It, and I would imitate him doing his imitations. So uh, it that's that's how it began. Uh, What's funny is, though, the journey took me from pretending I was someone else or idolizing someone else to becoming myself. And uh, that was the big key for me was to not hide behind the impressions, but to really uh, expose what's within me. I was just talking to Jackson about that earlier is, uh, you know, he tends to be very quiet. And I said, well, when you're in flow, you're in your happiness and you know, without limitations and fears is when you get out there and you just let <clears throat> your authentic self shine which is what we're meant to do on this planet so a lot of that was hiding at first when I did stand up and a lot of it was because you know I wanted uh, attention I wasn't getting 
And uh, now, my, now my little girl is like that. I don't understand it. <laughs> His little sister is out of her mind. She needs it to, she'll be here any second, I'm sure. She needs it to know, you don't want to clap on this one. She hogs the whole screen. But, uh, and I'm like, Chloe, we give you enough attention. I know why I did it. Why, why, why is she this way? I guess some people are born that way. You know, that's, yeah. their, that's their soul and that's their soul purpose. But uh, Jackson over, he quietly observes everything. We call him Dumbo ears. How old is, how, how old are you, Jackson? Uh, 10. 10. Oh, I, uh, I undershot your age. When you helped with the computer issues, I thought, oh, he's a nine-year-old. <laughs> but you're 10. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to help out. But uh, yeah, I think I hear Chloe bustling. Wait, oh, no, that's my wife. Hi, honey. Let's see your I'm wife. I'm on a Zoom. I'm on a Zoom call. I want to zoom in on your wife. No, but, but this is on. This is, if you don't want to be on camera, this is going out to the public. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if she wants to be. But I was just saying that uh, Jackson's quiet, and we're talking about getting attention. I said, wait till Chloe gets around here. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see. Where is she? She's in the bathroom. Okay, you're lucky. So get this over with while she's uh, taking a dump. <laughs> What's it like being married to a comedian? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> There's nothing private about our lives. <laughs> <laughs> you're adorable. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She's adorable. Oh, How long yeah. have you two been married? We had a debate about that. Oh, our, our, our anniversary's coming, it's coming up next up week. 12 year anniversary. 12? Yes, I thought it was 12. 14. We've been together 14. Been this together. isn't 13 years? I got, I, I'll i tell you, well, I don't want to be racist, but she is Asian and is better than math. She's better wow. at math. Wow, that's okay. awesome. What's your first name? Mika. Hi, Mika. Follow her, by the way. She's much more followable and interesting than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. That's awesome. Nice to meet you. We've all, we've nice all heard from me. We need to hear from her. Oh, she's exactly. Got, she's what's, got the funny, what's the funniest thing he's ever done or said oh. when he came back from doing comedy? <laughs> wow. Uh, when he came back from doing comedy. <laughs> Gosh. The funniest thing? <laughs> well, what you that did you to me say April, in front of Jackson. What they, did, what they did to me on April Fool's was kind of funny. They all got a big laugh out of that. That was a funny one. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you asked for it. Here it comes. Oh boy. Oh. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> How are you doing, sweetheart? You didn't, you didn't know what to expect here. You thought you were going to have an interview with me, but actually, Chloe, you seem quiet today. I don't know what's going on with that. Hi, Chloe. Do you have a pet? You got any oh, dogs oh. or cats? Wrong topic. Wrong topic. <laughs> How to <laughs> lose. I can't believe you went there. Of all your thousands of lists list of questions, you went right with the, our dog just died last week. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting over it. Uh, Do you have I, any pets, Chloe? Six-year-old Chloe? Yeah, well, I did until I just watched her be put to sleep last week. <laughs> Not just that, she's asking for bunnies, hamsters. Yeah, yeah, now she pigs. wants replacement bun bunnies. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no guinea pigs. No, guinea pigs. We, yeah, she wants a rabbit. Guinea pigs are just furry potatoes that walk around. What's that again? Guinea pigs are just furry potatoes that walk around in their cages and drink water. Oh my goodness, you are a comedian. They're furry potatoes. I never heard that before. I was an original. Was that an, Chloe original? That's pretty good. You would have loved growing up in the 50s, Chloe. We had this thing called Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> you could make him do anything. Mr. Potato Head. Well, he's in Toy Story, Mr. Potato Head. So she oh. knows that. See, it's crosses the generations. Wow. Chloe, you're beautiful. Are you beautiful on the inside or just the outside? <laughs> oh wow you're really getting full chloe she just gave me the look like what in the world kind of question was that <laughs> give it to her chloe she's had me and jackson on the hold for the last half hour <laughs> Ruby, it's it like having a daddy and a mommy be your teachers <laughs> yeah my real teacher is better <laughs> This is, Busted! She just, she just graduated <laughs> kindergarten two days ago. 
Aww. She's now a first grader, so you're going to get the first grade answers. Wonderful. Boy, oh boy. And I won't get that person from White Oak. What? All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. She's out. <laughs> I have a 43 year old daughter and she doesn't talk to me, so <laughs> I got to talk to kids. We're always, we're always in fear of how far it will go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dive on her. Tell me about growing up, coming out of Philly, and somebody must have told you we're funny. Well, it was actually, yes, they did. Although I was voted shortest in my high, uh, high school or junior high, I was 5'1 in ninth grade. Uh, and, um, and they posed me next to Eric Farber. It was like 6'5", and he had a fro, which made him 7'2". But uh, <laughs> they posed us next to each other, and, and I, uh, I hated that. And I lost the wittiest to, to Paul de Blasey. He won the wittiest. So um, he came to my audience one night at the Hollywood Improv, <laughs> and I just loved it because I was like, who's the funniest now, pal? <laughs> so he's a teacher. He's a teacher in the L.A. school district. So he's actually now being tortured the way he and I used to torture the teachers. <laughs> you know, we were, a, we were a, well, I, was, I was funny, but not as funny as Paul DeBlazy. Maybe he'll be headline, headlining soon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean – it was a, it was a more of a uh, a way to deal with you know traumas and pain and it was a way to deflect away and uh, it was a tool at one time and now it's a, a tool to uh, to open up hearts and minds and you know make people laugh and so it's really kind of you know shifted into that was which was once one thing is now become an, uh, an entirely different purpose. I so you have no idea how much I admire you for your organization, laughterheals.org. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I started that with I was inspired. My best friend got brain cancer, and he he was given three months to live. And his daughter was a year and a half, and that inspired me to start these workshops and like cancer facilities, wounded warriors, and things. And we uh, <clears throat> we offer guided laughitation. Other, pre other prescriptions because it is the best medicine and uh, we're trying to shift the consciousness of the world through laughter. It really does relieve stress and oxygenate your body and healing endorphins are being released. The studies are there, but we just don't, we have so much noise and clutter out there that's talking about fear and doubt and worry and violence and mayhem and chaos that we're forgetting that we have access to this medicine and they don't endorse it because there's no money behind it. It's free. Laughter's free. So I take people in these workshops and, and Gold's my, my friend with the brain cancer. They gave him three months to live. He, he lived 15 years uh, past that prognosis. It was a man's prognosis, which his, his spirit uh, um, beat that man's prognosis, you know, the, uh, the doctor. So that's what I believe in. I think that we should, uh, we should access those great feelings that we have within us on a daily basis, you know. Absolutely. I, I'm a, I was a, in the military. I'm a veteran. And so um, I started doing comedy the day Rocky Osborne taught me comedy the day my daughter and I went our separate ways and I knew she wasn't going to talk to me for a long time. Mm -hmm. Single mom, only child. No way did I want to live that day. I didn't want to take my life, but I didn't want to live. So I called up Rocky 14 miles away and I said, can you get me in and teach me comedy? And I mean today, because I don't want to live without, unless I can. So out of that, that deep pain that got me in the comedy, I met Will and Yvonne Morton and started traveling to veteran places and nursing homes, making people laugh. Yeah. And then I started doing it on my own on the West and the East Coast at veteran places on my own, you know, like, hello, you don't know me, but can I make some veterans laugh? Maybe in the bathroom, I don't care. So that's, I am so in line with what your organization stands for. And I'm so proud that you're doing it on a huger scale than I ever can at this well, point. We, Thank we, you so we, much we, for doing that work. You can always use other fun facilitators. <laughs> yes.
and uh, it's uh, it's this is a, a a world movement, not a personal one. You know, I I I you know I hand it over to a lot of different people, and we all are in alignment with that purpose. And uh, I just think uh, the world definitely at this point really needs more of it, and we just have to spread it one by one by one. Yes, well, my parents went through the Holocaust. And oh, yeah. I, that's the funniest premise you can ever say on stage. <laughs> yeah. And then you're pushing. I, I, I talk about that in the Laughter Heals workshops. Is like, is there anything that's off limits as far as uh, laughing? And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult question to answer. I, have, I've, I take people through these laughitations and, you know, I had one recently in Mexico, I was doing a workshop and she was talking about, you know, being violated and it was really, really hard. It was hard because everyone's uncomfortable, but I can guarantee whatever your process is, you know, laughter and tears are the same, you know, and so uh, you're not laughing at it, but you're laughing to access your medicine. So if that, if you're becoming more aware by doing that, that's important. It's important not to keep things down. And, and you know, if you do that, that's the poison that's going to make things worse. It's a, it's a wound that's going to fester. So unless you do talk about it, which, by the way, speaking of the, of the Holocaust, that awareness has caused uh, healings. It's caused a lot of healing in people because that's like a bottom for you know, it's a, it's a bottom that we have to address. And other people, you know, they say it didn't exist and they do all their things to fl float around what is the truth. And, and comedy is truth. That's the most important thing that I could ever pass on to anyone is if you, if you reveal your truth, there's nobody that can take that away from you. They, they, can, they can get mad at it because they're mad at something inside of themselves that they don't want to address. So, uh, you know, I encourage everybody to go in any different territory. And it, it is, it's scary for people. It's, it's not, it's not well accepted. We're, we just want to do the mindless acceptance of what's in front of us in the news, what they choose for you to believe, political parties and religions and all that. They want to choose it for you. They want to choose your standards, your morals, your values, your, you know, but nobody's talking about the value of laughter. You know, that it is, and it has a tremendous value to our lives and it's God given to us. And why not go for it? And go then they, they come out with COVID and tell us we're not essential. Yeah, I know. And I just did my first show, by the way. In person? In Tampa? Where did, where did you go? I, I went to Florida. What and, city? Uh, Hi, Chloe. I was in West, I was in uh, West Palm in Florida. Typical for Florida. They do anything the way they want to do it. So there were no masks at they, the club itself did social distancing and the wait staff wore masks, but no, no one in the audience. It was packed out, you know, it was as social distance packed out. But um, yeah. it was really uh, extraordinary because, again, the laughter is a great relief because we've been, you know, putting us all down, our feelings and things, you know. And now we're really into the doubt and the worries and the angst and the stress. It's really so, so this relief of laughter uh, it was just, it was kind of at a different level, you know, reminded me of after 9-11 when I was performing and it's, it's just, it's so needed and, and yet so avoided, unfortunately, but the people that were there that didn't avoid it, they had a great time. Wonderful. Yeah. In your entire life, other than your organization for healing purposes, what's your most what are you most proud of leaving a legacy for your children that you've accomplished? I wouldn't say it's an accomplishment, but I'd say what they know about me and what I do want to pass on is the, <clears throat> the uh, limitless potential that we all have, that we're all born with. So if I can pass that message on is to not accept the limitations that other people put on you and and really, really uh, access these wonderful, beautiful, light, levity feelings that are within us. And like the country says, pursuing happiness, you don't see much of it. Yeah. So uh, if I'm going to pass anything on and the, my legacy would be, you know, for more fulfillment, you'll have enjoyment and uh, really 
go to that space more often than you go to the other space. We do a thing with our family where we, uh, you know, another thing I, I enjoy that I, you know, came up with some of these things around the dinner table, some customs like gratitude lists. We all do a gratitude list. And my other son is not here when he was really little. He, he would just say every dinner, he'd go, I'm grateful for the whole wide world. And uh, because it's simple as that. It was simple as that. And then things become complex the more, uh, you know, mankind or man unkind gets into our consciousness, you know? Uh, so that's what I try to, you know, set the table literally uh, mm -hmm. with things like that. And we do what I love about you. We go around the room and say what I love about you and, you know, really uh, try to access those love feelings uh, more often than we do the other, you know, if, if we could do that. Yes. Um, how does somebody get in on your laughter, your healing laughing, se laughing seminar? Like if I want to come and laugh at everything with you or on the internet, if you do it that way somehow, how do I do it? What's it cost? Well, we don't have any going right now. Everything's in such an adjustment right now. We're all in flux and, you know, we don't have a president right now. And, uh, you know, it's just, and underfunded and people put people put money into like a politician you know like bribing a politician instead of putting something into goodness yes you know i mean like we're, we get pennies and you'll see like millions and millions of dollars uh, are spent on lobbyists and donations to causes like you know it, i'm not saying anything, i don't want to be specific with some of the causes but but we put tons of money into the illusion of research on things that have never been cured in all of the years of putting money into that research. And I can guarantee you, if people put money into this laughter research, the only thing that's gonna result is healing. <laughs> so that's why it's called Laughter Heals. It's the only thing that will result, but we're so programmed in a different way. Oh yeah, that united this society and that society. You know, and uh, you're putting money into the pockets of of people that a lot of times they don't want to cure because there's no money in the cure, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Keep you, keep you sick. But, um, have you done comedy for, have you gone on any of these military tours? Cause you're such a strong comic. I can see you in front of thousands of military. Yeah. I mean, I performed for the military before, but I have never been on a tour. Uh, it's, you know, for various reasons, but, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, my preference is to not be on the road at all. <laughs> you know, I'm producing a lot of TV and film right now. You are. So, and I really enjoy that because it's a community, it's collaboration, it's the way I, I really like to do things is, you know, I'm tired of, I'm solo all the time, you know, it's like, you know, I, I want, uh, you know, communion and people and relationships. I mean, that's my, that's my currency. The only hope there is in solo is in volleyball, or is it soccer? In soccer, there's a hope solo. No. <laughs> I'm into wordplay. Your children will love this when they grow up. <laughs> He's not smiling. <laughs> You're bombing with the 10-year-old over here. <laughs> I always do. I went and did comedy. Hi there. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at that face. You did nothing. <laughs> I don't even know how to read a room yet, so what do I care? I'm kidding. Jackson, you'll love it when you grow up. Hold on to this video. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I have gone and knocked on the doors of veteran places. You spoke about organizations that take money, but are you there? It's saying I'm unstable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It doesn't take a computer to get that. <laughs> you and Rich Voss have both got right on. You know how to read a room. Um, I went to the VA and asked them if I could do comedy. And you know what they told me? <clears throat> What's We're afraid that? you'll trigger a veteran. They said what? We're afraid you'll trigger a veteran. I swear to God. Yeah. I swear on my, on my Bible. I understand. Yeah, that's, that's, listen, we all have these, uh, 
this mindless acceptance of certain paradigms and the way to do things, but none of them have to do with joy or happiness. Exactly. No. So in the future, at some point, I'm going to get on your website and try to see when you have a seminar coming up. I'm in Vegas. I get around. Okay. Now I'm in Vegas and I want to come to one of your seminars and I want to help promote it because I believe in it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So go so get me some money first. <laughs> who's who's going to donate? What kind of companies can I go after? Anybody, 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 individuals, companies, you know, we, we're trying to, we, we have a mission and a, a movement and we want to begin that, but it always takes a little bit of money. You got to pay for an assistant or whoever manages your website. You know, I can't do it all, but uh, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just a vehicle, you know, and that's just one vehicle and to, to access where, where I believe we, we should go more often is to this, you know, place of uh, utopia, not myopia. Wow, I like that. That's wonderful. You know, I'm going to um, make a post and apologize that the video couldn't be live. And then I'm going to say that um, I, would, I would appreciate it because of laughterheals.org if you would get on there. And is there a place on the site to donate? Yes. Okay. I believe so. I haven't been there in a while, but uh, you know, you just hope, I just hope that they, people take care of those types of things. But you know, uh, I just get out there and keep on being Johnny laughter seed and still doing some performing. And, you know, like I said, just got back from Florida. I think flappers is coming up in Burbank. Yes. Um, not sure how we're doing that one. You know, everything's an adjustment. So I, it might be some live, it might be some on zoom. I don't know. It, just go to Flappers website, I guess, and they'll let you know when the shows are and what they, you know, I know that they're less of a price. I think we're, we're in the COVID discount phase. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, do you ever get to Vegas and what, where do you perform in Vegas? Cause I've only been here since uh, October. I do have gigs coming up there. Jimmy Kimmel's. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel's. It's all at CraigShoemaker.com, all the gigs. They're all shifting around. You know, I just got postponed from Irvine, postponed, I think Seattle might be postponed. But they have other dates in the future. Things will be back to somewhat normal, you know. Who knows? I do know uh, that the laughs are there. The, if the stage is there, the laughs are there. So um, whatever that stage is, you know, could be a Zoom call or whatever the hell. <laughs> yes. If, if you can get over the technical difficulties with. Other than your organization, are there any places where they could help you by boosting your numbers or views on your specials? Sure. Go to my YouTube channel, Craig Shoemaker YouTube channel, and uh, check it out. Rate it. And, you know, I made a number of different videos during the quarantine and. You know, just trying to supply, you know, we're, we're like pharmacists. Comedians are like pharmacists. We, you know, we're there they're doling out your your healthy drugs, you know, to help you. So, uh, yeah, just anywhere, anywhere you can. My podcast, it's called Dr. Craig Shoemaker, Can I Help You? And uh, I, I really, you know, love helping people and but using humor to access that help. And uh and then we have Comedy Kitchen. There's a podcast of Comedy Kitchen. It's me in a famous restaurant tour talking comedy and food. I'm training him to be a comedian. He's training me how to cook food. What a great so, premise. Uh, yeah, it's a great show. We have another show coming out, you know, uh, on Amazon. That we're doing more episodes of. Uh, but that's the podcast version. A video podcast. Wonderful. So I'll let, I'll let Facebook people that are sitting there going, she's hogging him all to herself. And Jackson, you can correct them because I'm, I'm also sharing him with you. You get to share life with your dad <laughs> and your mom until, when do you guys go back you to school? You how happy he is about that? <laughs> his last day of school was yesterday. So now this, you're, you're the start of his summer vacation. I'm sure he'll never forget it. <laughs> Trauma. That made him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to become a comedian now. <laughs> Get over this. 
he does he does have a, a laugh that comes out a lot it's it's awesome but uh that's but. so great yeah my parents you know i told you they went through the holocaust yeah. and never choose your parents if they came out of the holocaust because they'll my parents stared into thin air most of my childhood they were still stuck in the holocaust yeah. and i wanted attention you know and whenever they came out of that cloud they would argue at each other and if I told a joke, here's a trick, Jackson. When your parents are arguing, tell a joke. It will distract them. Drop a one-liner. <laughs> so that's where I parents, got my Parents don't argue. We don't argue. We have, like, we have like one argument every, not too often, right? No, we're, we, don't, we don't argue very often. Thank you for sharing, Mika, Jackson, and Chloe, and yourself. And yourself and your whole life you you emptied your i'm sure this is your favorite interview so thank you very much it's, it, it'll be at the top of my resume i'll uh, <laughs> well, well ahead of the tonight show or the late show or you know it's just like you just you just surpassed them by far i had to i had to honey and look at me look at me look at what show i'm on here <laughs> <laughs> this is like it, see what you got into when you married me uh -huh. I can't believe how short a time it is. Mika's like, do you like this dress on me? And, and you're like, do you like this joke? <laughs> is that how it works? No, it's not how it works. We have a different relationship than anybody else on the planet. I Seriously. With her, it would be more like, um, do you like this turnip that I'm going to juice right now? <laughs> She's, it's, it's no. no. Never says, how does this dress look like on me? Doesn't even wear a diamond. Do you have my ring on? No. no. See, she won't even wear my wedding ring. It, it's a whole other person here. I'm still adjusting. None of, none of the cliches, none of the you know, standards, none of the same arguments other people have. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful day together. Thank you too. All right. Thanks See so later. much. Everybody's talking at the comments spot.